Section 11.10, partial pressures, Dalton's law. This is often just called Dalton's law of partial pressures. Partial pressure is actually pretty important in the AP curriculum, so we'll go over it a little bit here. Uh, the basic idea is that when we have a mixture of gases, that each gas is going to exert its own type of pressure, and then those pressures are going to add up to be the total pressure. So take a look at these two cylinders. Now, what's important here is that these two cylinders, they're both at the same temperature. So the temperature is constant. They're, they both have the same volume. The volume is constant. Okay. The only thing that changes, so that's the stuff that's constant. The only thing that changes between these two is the number of particles, right? So since the number of particles changes, the pressure changes. So in this case, we have one, two, three, four particles, and it's exerting two. Uh, do I? Ooh, sorry. Exerting two atmospheres of pressure. Here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight particles. They're exerting four atmospheres of pressure. If I were to mix those two into the same container, I still have one, two, three, four. That's exerting its two atmospheres of pressure. I still have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's exerting its four atmospheres of pressure. So the total pressure is six atmospheres. And we show that by saying P total. So the total pressure is equal to the partial pressure of the individual gases. So uh, we know that air is a mixture. It's made up of mostly nitrogen, about 80% nitrogen, a little bit of oxygen, right around 20% oxygen, and then the rest is just some other stuff, right? And so they each have a partial pressure that they exert. So there's an example. Now, we typically use this idea of partial pressures when we collect a gas over water. So in this case, we have some reacting metal. Let's say that's magnesium reacting with HCl, which is, of course, our single replacement reaction. That's going to give off hydrogen gas. So that hydrogen gas travels along this tube, and then we have it in this gas collection vessel. Now, this gas collection vessel originally is full of water. Right? So that's full of water. The gas comes in and pushes the water down. It displaces the water. And if you go and look up a uh, partial pressures lab, you're going to see this. And, and then we do an AP lab like this. Right? So the big thing here, though, is that inside that container isn't just the hydrogen gas. It's also the water vapor. So that means that the total pressure inside this container is equal to the pressure of the gas that I collected plus the pressure of the water. But as we saw in an earlier video, the pressure of the water, which is the vapor pressure of the water, is dependent upon temperature. And so if I get the temperature of this water, I can get the vapor pressure of that water. And so with that vapor pressure, I can figure out the pressure of just the gas as long as I know the total pressure. Okay. Boom, chapter 11 is done.